Eastern Oregon set something up at like 50 and 100, like I'm saying, and then um, and then kind of practice on trying to get the, I guess, the distribution of my shot placement into a space that would be about as wide apart as a dinner plate. And then when I can kind of do that, then I guess I'd have the confidence to sort of consider that if I am taking a shot at a target or whatever, I'm not really going to be a hunter, I suppose, but, um, but yeah, if I'm uh, firing at a target at a range, then I know that... Uh, that my shot placement's consistent enough, or that you know my my use of it is consistent enough that it seems like I should be doing it. I hear about that with like archery too, you know, like when when people are getting into, um, well, I guess uh, bow hunting more specifically, you know, where they want to try and uh, make their shots at thirty yards and then forty yards more consistent, so that if they do take a shot when they're hunting, they have the shot placement and confidence in the shot placement at that range, so they can could take a shot and take an animal down, I suppose. Because uh, that's kind of one of the worst things is if uh, if you're outside of that, if you're hunting and you're outside of that, say, dinner, dinner plate-sized target patch, then you'll get a bad hit, they say. And then it won't, uh, it won't be as direct. And then it'll really, I think, generally just cause more suffering as we would <laughs> maybe leave it there in the conversation. But uh, uh, so I don't think that's really anyone's goal as it uh, as uh you know, like when you're out out about. So, um, yeah, it was cool doing some target practice stuff. Trying to get into that with uh, with some of the time that I've had. But um, I wanted to talk a little bit on this podcast, even though I've been going on for a while now, about wedding photography. And I thought that the the wedding photography industry was maybe uh, one of those interesting problems that uh, we're, we're going to see. Uh, kind of continued to spill out over the next months. It seems like with this, with COVID and then with the lockdown and then with the the multi-phase reopening plan that we have, there's going to be a lot of businesses and industries that come back online and a lot of people seem to get back to work uh, with a significant hiccup in the system. But it seems like maybe those industries will come back online and get back to work uh, sort of smoothly. I'm curious about the wedding industry or the well the wedding industry the events industry overall and then uh, as it sort of trickled down trickles down the uh the economic pyramid there how how does that arrive at wedding photographers and that's sort of uh one of the questions that i've i've been mulling over over the last weeks i mean it seems like everybody went through the experience of having any any booked gigs during the month of april or may uh just sort of canceled and evaporated uh, <laughs> right right before everyone's eyes. Um, so I, I, I was curious how that was for any wedding photographers out there. I mean, I, I remember uh, there was like a wedding back on like March 6th, and now I think of it, and that just barely snuck under the wire there. And then for the last many months, there's been no public gatherings of that type and, uh, and no, you know, no events uh, for for that kind of thing, so I was curious. Yeah, like man, like what's that going to do to industries where it really you just have to have some level of confidence, uh, you know, like market confidence to try and participate in. I was thinking about yeah, like vacationing or even yeah, you know, a lot of leisure based stuff. It seems like a, a lot of families uh, are going to be in a position where they've not been working for a period of time, and to some capacity they're going to be in the hole. You know, I mean, with everybody's mortgage crisis or rent crisis or job crisis or oh man i mean please you know fill in the list um of what we're going to be experiencing in the next six six months <laughs> or what it's going to be identified as experience in the next six months it'll be interesting to kind of go through as i understand it like even in places like california where they're getting into their phase two and then phase three parts of the reopening i think they're, they're going to have bars and then nightclubs return, and then I think maybe later into that even is when you're going to get event centers to open back up again. That's more for like lo- like concert venues or sporting event venues, that sort of, sort of thing. Um, but I was interested, just kind of more specifically, yeah, like how how is a wedding venue going to reopen? And I figure, kind of given the the news of some things, it seems like there's just going to be a lot of things that reopen. They just oh, well, we're open again, you know. At least in a number of states, it seems like Texas is sort of moving that way. Oklahoma's moving that way. 
it seems like a lot of those kind of Midwestern and Southern states are, are sort of moving in that direct direction pretty quickly. And really, as even I can say, a lot of places in Oregon, especially this rural area of Oregon, there's there's not many masks. There's not many private business guidelines that you interact with. Uh, so it, there's just not, and, and, and I mean,